Blimey, this has been a long time coming. But after a glorious four months of ownership, I'm now ready to talk about my latest acquisition, the JLC Master Ultra Thin Moon Phase. Now you've heard all about the drama of the initial purchase in my previous videos, well now it's time to dig deep and talk about why I bought this watch and what I think about it. Was it worth all the fuss? Well, let's find out. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. Now this channel is about me and my watch collecting journey, an amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now if you like this video please hit the thumbs up. I'd also ask some of the 82% viewership who aren't subscribed to give the channel a go on a regular basis. I don't upload often and subscribing makes a significant impact to the channel. As we're now over 1 million views, I know it's hard to believe, you can now use the tip link in the action bar below which is an easy way to show your appreciation. And failing that you can still buy me a virtual coffee at the link in the description where you'll also find some timestamps to navigate through this episode. Now it's true that dressier pieces have suffered at the hands of chunkier still sports watches over the years which offer that do-it-all rugged ability starting decades ago with the likes of the Submariner and the Speedmaster. Now for years dress watches were on the small side, 36mm and below, but a perfect accessory for the well dressed gent. But we live in changing times and it's time to mix things up. Don't think you can wear a dress watch in a casual setting? Well, think again and JLC has the answer. Now as you know I've been courting this watch for some time, using my famous mood board to help me through the selection process. Now with a significant milestone to celebrate, it was worth taking the time to get a forever piece, one I would cherish and not just see as a vehicle to the next. Now as I've developed my tastes and understanding of various watch brands and watch designs, I've grown very attached to JLC. And as you'll know from the review I did on the Master Control calendar back in 2020, we were really close back then. Now the obvious choice would be to go for a Reverso, JLC's iconic rectangular watch dating back to 1931 and arguably one of the first sports watches. Now a watch worn by Pierce Brosnan in the Thomas Crown Affair, a very personal favourite of mine and the perfect date movie in my humble opinion, but also Christian Bale as Batman's alter ego Bruce Wayne. Two great performances that would give any man of a certain age the perfect excuse to go and buy one. But no. I've tried the Reverso on a few times, I appreciate it, but it's just not for me. Now one of the first rules of watch collecting after only buy what you can afford is only buy pieces you like, not ones others would otherwise suggest you should buy. Buy what feels good, I can't explain it but you'll know when it happens. And then there's the subject of this video and my most recent acquisition, a JLC I can bond with, a watch initially tried on in April 2021. Something different something elegant, a watch designed and assembled with the utmost attention to detail by a house that cares for such things. I give you the Gégère Le Coultre Master Ultra Thin Moon. If you haven't done so already, why not check out the unboxing in a previous episode. There's also a short showing me removing all the sticky tape from the case, very satisfying. Now let's get the obvious question out of the way first. Why did I need a watch with a moon phase in the collection? Well, as is the case with all watch purchases, there is no rational reason at all. No more than the need for a mechanical stopwatch in my Speedmaster. But when it comes to the purpose of this purchase, one to celebrate a significant milestone and in this case a 25th wedding anniversary, there were two aspects to my thought process. The first being something silver for the anniversary, and in this case a silver dial. The second, and without going all philosophical, I wanted to inject some romance, some elegance and above all something that both my wife and I could feel connected to. Feelings that I can't describe, you're just aware of them. They make you feel good, special and bring back happy memories. Now I was a budding astronomer in my teenage years, 
never too far from a planisphere. Never seen those very often. And something I wish to pursue again in the near future, when time becomes my friend again. Now, casting my mind back many years to our initial courtship at university, my then girlfriend and I would find a patch of grass on the way back from the pub, lie down and gaze up at the heavens, and doing our best to pick out the constellations, planets and stars. Now, what happened next is none of your business, but you get the point. We both have a love of the celestial, not to mention me being a rocket nerd. Now, I could have gone on another route and talked about how the sun and the moon were our primary form of time and date keeping for many thousands of years. And all of that is true, but being a romantic, I prefer the former. Now, there were no good reasons not to buy other than logic, but logic was not allowed a seat at the table that day. Now, I've deliberately not referred to this watch as a dress watch, and as you'll see later, we should be careful how we categorise watches as it can lead to exclusion by association of otherwise stylish and very versatile pieces. So, why JLC? Well, followers of mine will have seen I have tried on other moon phase watches, of which there are a great few out there, notably from Longines, at a very attainable price. But on this occasion, the love boat was pushed out big time and settling for a piece that didn't fire all those indescribable feelings just wasn't going to cut it. And there was no going back after trying on the JLC. Now, since owning and wearing the watch, watch lovers refer to my Jeger with a hint of a French accent. Even the name resonates a romance. Now, the price of this particular watch has risen dramatically over the past 12 months, where it now retails over £10,800 that's £2,000 in a year, and is a true sign that JLC is trying to distance itself from the mainstream brands and quite rightly given what is on offer from one of the world's best watchmakers. Now it's my understanding that JLC will move as others are to a boutique model, and it's clear as it's happening with the other brands that supply and pricing are balancing so discounting will become more challenging to come by, although still available at some ADs if you ask nicely. Now, I've done my best, but I have to mention the watchmaker's watchmaker cliché, or La Grande Maison, as they say locally. This title is absolutely well earned and used within the industry, not just amongst us content creators. Now, although the Giger Le Court company was formed in 1937, Antoine Le Court was pioneering micro-precision techniques to develop highly precise calibers nearly 200 years ago. And to this day, JLC design, manufacture and assemble everything from calibre to case under one roof, giving them total control over quality. So be in no doubt whether you're getting an in-house calibre or not, you're getting the in-house calibre. And as part of the Richmond Group for 20 years, JLC sits in good company alongside Cartier, Vacheron, Alangonzona, IWC and Panerai, to name just a few. Names we'd all like to see in our watch boxes. The Ultra Thin range pays tribute to the Ultra Thin pocket watches of the 20th century. This particular model has been in the collection for 10 or so years and just undergone a small facelift, with minor changes to the dial, a longer power reserve and new quick release hardware for the strap and buckle. This has brought this model right up to date while maintaining a clear visual style. It now sits alongside both gents and ladies versions in both steel and gold with various complications from the simple small seconds to the extravagance of the Turbion Moon. Now, Although blue and black dials are available with the steel case, I think the silver grade opaline dial looks so classy, timeless and in my opinion makes this watch more versatile. This isn't just a dress watch. Focusing on the dial, JLC described this as silvered grey with a sunray brush. The summary aspect is very subtle, but the matte finish allows surprisingly good contrast to the polished and faceted dart style indices and the dolphin style hands, both of which are rhodium plated. In contrast, the sweeping second sand is a wonderful blue heat treated affair, giving a hint of colour on an otherwise monochrome dial. And this is where the moon phase aspect comes into its own, breaking the dial up nicely in the lower half. There are two complications in the sub-window, with the radial date adjusted by a pusher on the right side of the case and the moon phase adjusted by the left side pusher. The moon phase disc is finished in the same blue as the second sand with a polished metallic moon and stars. The disc looks almost black, but the blue catches the light giving a surprise flash of colour as you roll your wrist. We have an applied JLC logo at the 12 o'clock with the full name printed below. No other text is necessary or welcome. 
The case is highly polished and measures up at 39mm in diameter, 46mm across the lugs and 9.7mm thick, making this watch very worthy of its name. This is no diver however, despite having 50 meters of water resistance. This is a watch that almost anyone can wear and sits perfectly on my 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist. The case has a very slender mid case design emphasizing this is a true ultra thin watch with the polished two stage bezel retaining the sapphire crystal. With short delicate lugs there's also a very well executed screwed display case back giving front row seats to that very accomplished caliber 925 movement. Thanks to the introduction of the Master Range in 1992, all calibers benefit from the incredible 6 week or 1000 hour control testing and ensure each fully cased watch exceeds chronometer standards of minus 4 to plus 6 seconds per day. Although no absolute values are quoted, this caliber 925 is easily keeping plus 2 to minus 2 seconds per day in the time I've had it. Now in the recent facelift the movement now has 70 hours of power reserve up from 43 and that skeletonized gold winding rotor is supported by ceramic bearings increasing winding efficiency and service life. But as with some modern Rolexes it rattles a little bit like a fidget spinner with those unlubricated bearing surfaces. Now I don't mind this and it reminds me there's something special on my wrist. Now Calibre 925 is super thin at 4.9mm and includes the moon face complication which only adds a single millimeter over the small seconds variant. The additional gearing ensures the moon passes over every 29 and a half days according to JLC. Now higher complication watches will track this more precisely but in this instance it will only be out of date one day after three years which I can live with. Now although not stated I believe this caliber has some silicon parts making it somewhat anti-magnetic but JLC do issue a care message warning the user about magnetism so I don't expect this to have omega levels of protection. Now JLC did send me a lovely email once I registered for the 8 year warranty and I have been in touch with their UK operations a few times asking about the watch and always had a prompt and concise response after each time. Now that's excellent service. Now I bought this particular piece from Berries in Leeds, another source of superb customer service unlike my experience in watches of Switzerland. Now Berries also supplied me with a shorter strap as the one supplied is rather on the long side. The strap itself is a beautiful matte finished alligator affair with black stitching and grey calf leather on the underside. The strap is 21mm at the lugs and 18mm at the buckle and comes with a quick release spring bar for tallest changeover. The deployment clasp is a friction fit design that's highly polished and very comfortable. It too has quick release with a small button that releases the spring bar without fuss. Summing up then, I love this watch. In fact, I wear this watch a lot. I wear it to work in a business casual environment. I wear it to go shopping in jeans and a sweater. This is a very versatile watch and in steel with a silver dial, a perfect under the radar combination. As a collector who likes to rotate through all his watches, versatility counts for a lot. Yes, the sports watches get more than their fair share of attention, but this is the watch that grabs the attention of others and gets the nod from those who know. I know we're only talking about a few millimetres here or there, but for me 39mm with a lug to lug wingspan of sub 50mm is just about perfect for my wrist. Now with the super thin bezel this dial is just about the right size. It's not the most legible watch I own, but yeah that's not the point. It's elegance and feel good factor. The knowledge that the watch has been crafted by the best movement engineers in the business is where I derive immense satisfaction. Now it's noticeable as well that the secondary market isn't flooded with this particular model. Maybe a testament to how this piece sits in a collection. A keeper you may say. Now I hope you really enjoyed my review of the JLC Master Control Moon. It was a long time coming but I needed time with the watch to truly get under its skin and I hope that came over in the presentation. Now if you found this useful why not hit the tip link in the action bar below and hit that thumbs up. Now while you're there why not click the subscribe button also. You made it this far so hopefully you'll enjoy coming back soon. It's never too late to buy me a virtual coffee at the link in the description and while you're down there leave your thoughts on the JLC Ultra Thin Moon or your views on dress watches in general. Anyway I'm Andy this has been the English Watch take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.